Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's Girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu. If you feel like there's something that you guys want us to react to, drop the link in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to do it. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed we're very very grateful i hope you guys are doing all right and may you stay blessed so today i'm going to be reacting to 10 biggest differences between islam and judaism so without wasting time let's get into the video the religion of judaism and islam are known to have some striking similarities including the lineage of prophets certain acts that are forbidden and the belief in one god However, there are some big differences that can be found in these religions. Hey guys, welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton, and this episode is actually intended to clear up any confusion or understanding of certain concepts and beliefs and encourage understanding of these two religions. So let's begin. We're counting down from 10 to number one. At number 10, we have the name, the name of the religion. When it comes to Islam, Islam is an Arabic word meaning submission, and in the religious context, it means submission to the will of God. Islam is derived from an Arabic word literally meaning peace. Now, for Judaism, the word can be broken down as Judaism. The English term Jew or Judah originates in the biblical Hebrew word Yahudi, meaning from the kingdom of Judah or in a more religious sense, worshiper of one God. Moving on to number nine, their holy book. That's a big difference here. For Judaism, the Hebrew scriptures referred to by the Christians as the Old Testament are called the Tanakh, which is a Hebrew acronym for the three different parts. And it's divided up like this. There is the Torah, which is the first five books of the Old Testament or the Pentateuch. Then there is the Nevi'im, which are the books of the prophets. And then the Kituvim, which refers to the writings. When it comes to Islam, the source of all authority in Islam is the Quran. Muslims believe that it is the verbatim word of God, who they refer to as Allah, and God dictated this to Muhammad, the prophet, in the Arabic language. The Quran is divided up now into chapters or surahs, and the Quran contains 114 surahs, and the surahs are further divided into verses called ayahs. Next up, we have other traditions. For Islam, there is the Hadith, which is a collection of traditions and sayings of the prophet Muhammad. And the Hadith actually functions as a supplement to the Quran, giving guidance to Muslims for just daily living. Judaism has the Talmud, which is an oral tradition that explains and interprets the Tanakh. It includes the Mishnah, which is a code of Jewish law. The next difference is a difference in prayer. When it comes to Islam, there are five daily obligatory prayers that form the second pillar of Islam. And it's observed five times a day at certain prescribed times. Times. And we have the Fajr, which is observed at dawn. The Zuhur prayer is done at noon. Then there's the Asr prayer, which is done in the afternoon. The Maghrib prayer is observed at dusk. And the Isha prayer is observed after sunset. Now in Judaism, Jews are actually supposed to pray three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. There's also a Jewish prayer book. It is known as the Siddur, and it actually has special services that are set down for this. Praying regularly helps a person get better at building their relationship with their God. There's also a massive difference when it comes to the population of Muslims and Jews. So let's look at Islam first. It's estimated that there's 1.8 billion or closer to 2 billion, by some estimates, Muslims in the world. And when you calculate that, that's more than 24% of the world's total population who identify as Muslim. Islam is the official religion in 26 countries in Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, North Africa, and the Middle East. Islam is also growing faster than any other religion in the entire world. And when it comes to Judaism, the world population is a lot smaller 
The population of Jews stands at 14.7 million, according to a report by Israel's Central Bureau of Statistics. The world Jewish population reached a total of 16.6 million, but this was right before the start of World War II back in the year 1939. So the Jewish population has dipped since then. All right guys, so we looked at five differences between Islam and Judaism. We have five more to look at, but before we get into the last five, just gotta let you know of our video of 10 similarities between Islam and Judaism. I think you guys will really enjoy that one. We go very in depth into some of the striking similarities. I'll link to that video down below so you can watch it after this one. Okay, continuing to number five, we have Mary. In Islam, Mary or Maryam receives a lot of admiration and is a very significant person. She's said by the Prophet Muhammad to be one of the four best women that God has ever created. There's even a surah or chapter in the Quran called Maryam, which is dedicated to Mary. Surah Maryam is the 19th chapter of the Quran and it contains 98 ayahs or verses. And when it comes to Judaism, the belief in Mary actually does not apply to the religion at all. She plays no role in the Jewish tradition or religion other than historically. They would acknowledge that someone named Mary did in fact exist. But while we're looking at the difference in Mary, let's also look at the differences in Jesus. In Judaism, Jesus is not viewed as the Messiah nor the virgin birth is acknowledged. This is largely due to the belief that Jesus, if he ever existed according to Jewish belief, didn't fulfill the scriptural requirements that the Messiah was supposed to fulfill. And for some Jews, more recently though, they have adopted the belief that Jesus was simply a good Jewish teacher. But in Islam, the belief in Jesus is much different. Islam though, similar to Judaism, does not teach that Jesus was divine or that he died for the sins of the world. However, in Islam, Jesus is identified as the Messiah, as well as his virgin birth is mentioned in the Quran. And Jesus is also regarded as one of the mightiest messengers of God and did many miracles among his people. Number three brings us to differences in the Sabbath. When it comes to Islam, the Quran affirms that Jews are supposed to observe the Sabbath and God, however, ordered Muslims to make every effort to drop all of their business and attend the congregational Friday prayer. Muslims can also then go and continue on their regular activity for the rest of the day. And this is actually referenced in the Quran Surah 62 verses 9. But in Judaism, the Jewish Sabbath or Shabbat from the Hebrew word Shabbat, which means to rest, is observed throughout the year on the seventh day of each week, Saturday. According to biblical tradition, the Sabbath commemorates the original seventh day on which God rested after creating the earth. Now the Sabbath is a day of rest for the Jews and its observance begins on Friday sunset up until Saturday sunset. Number two brings us another huge difference. Who was the son that was to be sacrificed? In Judaism, they teach that at some point in Isaac's youth, his father Abraham took him to Mount Moriah and at God's command, Abraham was to build a sacrificial altar and sacrifice his son Isaac on the altar. But after he tied up his son and the altar was ready, he was ready to draw the knife to kill his son. But at the last moment, there was an angel from God that prevented Abraham from doing so. And instead, he was then directed to sacrifice a nearby ram that was stuck in the bushes. But in Islam, the story goes a bit different. Muslims hold the belief that Abraham was told to sacrifice his son Ismail, also known as Ishmael, although the Quran does not actually mention the name of the son to be sacrificed. And as it goes, as Abraham attempts to slay Ishmael or Ismail, an angel appears to prevent the death and God tells Abraham that he has fulfilled the command. And finally, we made it to number one, the biggest difference in this episode when it comes to Judaism and Islam. And this is the status of their religion. So let's look at Judaism first. Jewish people believe that there is only one God who has established a covenant or special agreement with them. And their God communicates to believers through prophets and rewards good deeds while also punishing evil deeds. Most Jews, with the exception of of certain groups believe that their Messiah still has not come yet, but one day he will come. 
Judaism does not believe that other people must adopt its own religious beliefs and practices in order to be redeemed. They believe that it is by your deeds, not by creed, that you're judged. When it comes to this in Islam though, the status of their religion, well the Quran refers to Islam as the religion of Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Jesus, as well as all the other prophets. And it's simply the last of the divine messages to reach humankind through the Prophet Muhammad, who was chosen by God as the bearer of this final revelation. It's an all-encompassing revelation for the entire world, not just for the Muslims. Now, conversion by Muslims to other faiths is actually forbidden under most interpretations of Sharia law, and converts are considered apostates. Now, non-Muslims, however, are allowed to convert into Islam. So there you have it, guys. This was a look at the 10 biggest differences between Islam and Judaism. Really hope this video was insightful and eye-opening and taught you a little bit more about these two great religions. Definitely let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Also, don't forget to check out the recommended video that I mentioned. I'll link to it below as well so you can take a look at it right now because I'm out of here and I'll see you guys in the next episode. I'd love to see more videos like this. This was quite um, interesting. A few things were new to me, like the is it Tanakh? I've forgotten. I didn't even know it was um, divided into three parts. All I've known is that it's just the Torah and that's that. Another thing I was surprised about the manner in which both religions uh, pray. I thought they actually prayed in the same way. Not the number of times they pray per day, but in terms of bowing and everything else. And I did ask a question, if, say, a Muslim, yeah, fine, I've been following the faith religiously, but then it so happens that I convert to something else, or maybe just stop believing in God, but then after I go through that phase in life, would I be allowed to revert back to Islam? or that's uh, not allowed because I was, I was thinking about his first his first what his first fact his last fact if you want and i'm just very very curious otherwise i always love to see videos like this i wish there was more videos like this out there teaching us the differences and similarities i think i've actually reacted to the similarities otherwise let me know what you guys think if there's something that you guys want to want me to react to let me know by dropping the link in the comment section below and i'll be more than glad to do it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video